Here comes example two, except I'm going to use this same formula that we had before, this same equation, right? I've got a equals pi r squared. Well, I could substitute for that other pronumeral in there, the a, right? So if I said substitute rather than r equals, oop, wrong color, substitute a equals, Now, I don't know what that's going to be. 225 times pi is about 225 times 3. It's like 700 and 675, thereabouts, OK? So that's a really big circle, which I just got rid of. I'm going to try and take on a smaller circle. So suppose I had a circle, and its area was 100. I'm going to do it just like I did before, and I'm going to substitute it into here. OK? So what I can do is if I swap out that a, the area pronumeral, if I swap it for the number, I can use that to find other things. So I'm going to say 100 equals pi r squared. What line is this? What name did I just give to this line? I put it in orange. This is the substitution line, right? I've done no working out at all, but that's because I want to make sure I substitute it exactly correctly. You wouldn't believe how many mistakes people make by trying to do a bit in their head, and then they do that bit wrong, and their substitution ends up incorrect. Okay, now at this point, um, you know, kind of a nice thing to work out would be the radius. Maybe solve to find the radius. So what could I do to this equation? We've been dealing with equations since last year that could help me get toward the solution. Any suggestions? Pi. So there's a pi here, right? It's pi here, right? And it's kind of in the way of me having the radius all by itself. I don't really want that pi there. So what could I do to both sides that would eliminate the pi from the right-hand side? Hmm, what do you reckon, Sandy? Okay, so I could divide. Now, just before I do what Sandy suggests, which is a great idea, I want to ask all of you, why not subtract? Like there's a pi there, if I take away pi, won't the pi be gone? Why don't I just take away pi from both sides? Can anyone tell me why that might not be so helpful? Helen, what are you thinking? So it would be 100 minus pi. Okay, 100 minus pi on the left hand side. So is there anything wrong with having 100 minus pi? Doesn't that still get rid of the pi? Why is it division, as Sahendu is suggesting, and not subtraction? What are you, what are you thinking, Rishan? Radius squared is um, multiplied by pi. Ah, so can you repeat that one more time just so that everyone catches it because it's really important. Uh, pi, pi multiplies with radius squared, and if you were to subtract it from 100, you'd have to divide it. Very good. So if you didn't quite catch that, right, do you remember when we were doing our abbreviations for algebra before? You don't need to write this down. If you see something like this, 5a, right? That's actually an abbreviation, right? What's an abbreviation for? What's missing there that's actually implied? Yeah. Yeah, there's a multiplication. As Krishan said, there's a multiplication here, and there's also multiplication hiding right in there. There he is, right? So if I wanted to not have the pi on this side, I have to undo multiplication, right? And I divide by that, not using subtraction. Does that make sense? Um, if I was adding, then I would undo that by subtraction. OK, now that we've just established the Hounders idea is a good idea, let's go ahead and do it. So I'm going to divide both sides by pi, like so. OK, that leaves me with this on the left-hand side. What am I getting on the right? Yeah, anyway, just r squared. There we go. Now, I don't know what 100 divided by pi is. Probably you don't either. That's what we have calculators for, so don't stress about that too much. But there's one last thing I need to do to get just r. I don't want r squared. I just want r by itself. What can I do? Square. Yeah, I can take the square root. Just like the opposite of multiplication is division, the opposite of squaring is take the square root. OK, so we'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to put the r over here on the left-hand side now, because I'm going to finish this off. And I've got the square root of 100 divided by pi. OK? Now, just a couple of quick things to note, right? Uh, you actually can get a negative number out of this, too. If you squared the negative of this, you'd still get that, right? Can someone tell me why I'm going to ignore that negative? Why, do, why can't I have a negative here? Why would that be like a silly answer to have? What am I trying to find out? What's the thing I'm solving for? Yeah, Jessica, what are you saying? Because if I can't have the radius, so you can't have a negative radius, you have to have an actual number. Yeah, very good. So if you didn't catch it, right? 
This R, right, and this comes back to the very first thing that we wrote on the board, right? This is a pronumeral. It stands in place of something in particular. So you have to think about what's it standing in place of. A radius is a length. You've got to be able to measure it. So this has to be positive. So you might like to write on the side here with me, R is positive. And I'm even going to write the reason for that, because it's a length. Now, just for completeness, could someone reach for their calculator, or you might already have it there, and can someone tell me what the square root of 100 divided by pi actually is equal to? Maybe we could get two decimal places of accuracy. Is anyone there? I got, I got it. You've, you've got an answer here? Oh, you've got, can you tell me the square root has someone put into their calculator? Sandy, you've already given me a few good answers today, so let's see if we can some, someone to get someone else to get there. Five, Anyone else? 5.64. 5.64. Do I get some agreements and confirmation from you guys? Because I actually do not have a calculator here, and the calculator in my brain can't handle that, so I'm going to ask for you guys to help me out. 5.64 to two decimal places. By the way, 5.64 is actually small enough for you to picture on your page there. Does a 5.64 radius circle feel like it should have an area of 100 centimeters? Square centimeters, I should say. 5.64. Think about it. Look at it on your page. 5.64 would go sort of mostly halfway across, yeah? I'm pretty happy with that. I always do a sense check when I'm done. Okay? Okay. So here's our last example. Now, there's two differences between this guy and the ones that we had a look at before. Anyone want to call out some of the differences? Mary, what do you see? Oh, oh. Or you're, you're already going to an answer? <laughs> let's, let's, let's park that for a second. I will get your answer in a minute. But um, what differences do you see between this and the two examples we've just done? Any takers? Emma, can you give me one? Um, this one doesn't have pi. Okay, so there's no pi. Um, there's also no squared. There's no, I could keep on going for this for a while. Okay, good. Can someone give me another difference? Yeah. Uh, it has four. It has four extra numbers. Ooh, I've got like, I've got like more stuff here, right? Do you remember over here, I just had one number to put in? Yeah? But here I've got a bunch. I've got, actually I'm counting not four, but one, two, three. Three things to substitute, okay? Louise, did you ha see something similar or different? It's a negative number. Oh yeah, this guy here. Now, remember, we said right at the front, pronumerals can stand for different numbers, well they can stand for any kind of number that we like. You could put in fractions if you wanted, in fact I have a decimal here, so you're like, ooh, it's a bit funny to deal with, okay? But that's fine, these can really stand for anything. Okay? One last thing I want to point out, right? I gave you a equals pi r squared before, that was a formula, it was an equation because it had an equal sign in it, right? Have a look at what you're substituting into right now, here it is. Is this an equation? This is not an equation, how can you tell? There's no, there's no equal sign, which is where an equation gets its name, right? But that's okay, you can still substitute into an expression and you'll just get a number out the end, okay? Shall we do this together? We're going to do the first thing, a minus b on 2c. I'm going to do the, what's it called again? Very first thing I do. The substitution line, right? So even though I could simplify some stuff in my brain, I'm like, I know what 4 take away 1.2 is. Well, maybe you don't, that's okay. But if you do, I still want you to do this line so I can see what you're thinking. So I can see you do, there's one, and there's two, I can see you do the substitution. Does that make sense? There's the numerator. What shall I write on my denominator? Um, two times. Two times. Yeah, watch out for that negative, right? The negative comes along for the ride. So I'm going to do multiplication like that. Okay, now you probably know, I'm like, I know that's equal to negative 6, but I still want to see this substitution line laid really clearly out. Now we can actually do some calculations. Okay, 2.8, very good, divided by negative 6. And I mean, you could probably simplify this, it's a bit weird having decimals and that kind of thing. Maybe I would multiply everything by 10, something like that. Okay, we could, we could go to a decimal. One of the issues with a decimal here, though, is I bet it's got lots of numbers trailing off the end, does it? Yeah, and then it's like, oh, I don't know. So it's going to be approximate. So I'd like to keep it as a fraction because fractions will stay exact. Can someone help me out? What can I do here? What can you divide the top and the bottom by? Two. You can do two? Can you go better than two? Then we can go four. That gives me seven and fifteen. And then this minus sign's on the bottom. Strictly speaking, there's nothing wrong with that, but we tend to like them 
on the top. So I'm going to write this final line as negative, what was on the top again? 7 over, and that's exact, so I'm pretty happy with that. Okay?